What is up, my YouTube family? Tonight we are going to do some leaves. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And I hope you have a really nice holiday season. So this is going to... I'm trying to switch it up a little bit and not just do canvases. I'm trying to do more, more stuff that you can use. Sorry I've been away for a while. I kind of took a mental break away from... A lot of stuff over the past two weeks and you know I, I worked so hard on the blooms and then I achieved it and it was like I, I was really worn out so I wanted to just kind of take a break and then let myself reboot I don't know if it happens to you guys but it happens to me you know a couple times a year and you know my my health is still an issue I have to go to the doctor and get myself rechecked out to find out why I'm still in the amount of pain that I'm in so I'm doing the best that I can to try and you know keep up keep up with everything but um, it's been real challenging recently so I appreciate everybody who has stuck with me all the shout outs Karen from Waterfall Acrylics and Jenny Post and Tammy Anderson um, Molten Girls uh, Pam from FX Acrylics all of you guys um, I, I could go on and on and all of my people in art addicts you guys have been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for all of your support and whatnot. So uh, I don't want to ramble on. <laughs> Let's get right to it because this video might be a little lengthy with what I've got going on as it is. So a permanent violet dark from Golden. We have pyro red light from Golden. I'm going to use, I don't know if I'm going to mix these two or not because this is more of like a reddish orange the cadmium orange hue and then that's the metallic orange I haven't totally decided yet then we're going to use the craftnik red and the blue and we're going to make like a cranberry burgundy kind of color so I'm going to set my untinted base up in here I get these from Harbor, Harbor Freight that comes in a pack of three I think they're like two bucks and this is the untinted paint base so I can just squirt it into my measuring spoon somebody asked me the other day you know why do I measure and for the sake of tutorials and teaching you guys I want you to be able to see exactly how much I'm putting in of what because this recipe is kind of forgiving but it's more of like I don't want to say beginner it's more intermediate to advanced so measuring helps you guys see exactly what we're looking for and I'm going to pause you while I do it so we can kill some time. But I'm just putting a teaspoon of the untinted paint base in each cup, okay? You can kind of overflow it so you don't have to scrape the cup every single time. If I need to add more or less, then I'll do that. So there's a teaspoon of the untinted paint base in each one of these cups. And I'm going to come in with a quarter teaspoon of the fluid acrylics. So for the fluid acrylics is one part of fluid acrylics to four parts of the untinted paint base and then one part of the gel stain so you basically have a teaspoon of pouring medium a quarter teaspoon of the fluid acrylics and then a quarter teaspoon of the gel stain all right so it's very very simple actually you know what we'll do the gel stain first so the colorants can slide right out yes it is tinted red I accidentally dropped a tiny drop of burnt sienna in there and it colored it on me but it's still salvageable there's nothing there's nothing wrong with it. all right yeah quarter teaspoon here and we'll just go down the line you can mix it up right now or you can add your colors and then mix it it really doesn't matter so our purple um i actually might hit this with some magenta too because i want it to be more of like a prism or deep violet 
and this is um, violet dark so we'll just fill that guy up almost and then dump it in and then I can either come in with uh, Liquitex fluid ink acrylics or I can um, use the golden um, these are samples but I can use the golden acrylics you can even use high flows it's up to you so I actually like the way the inks bleed into into things so I am going to add some of that in here like that maybe four drops give that a little mix now the the untinted pouring medium has like a smoky white transparent type of color it's kind of the same idea as glue it's gonna dry clear but it can be deceiving because right now it looks a lot lighter and it's gonna darken when it dries so if you over tint it a lot of the times you can make your uh, you can make your color too heavy to where it'll sink right down to the bottom so you have to be careful of that okay so as of right now yeah that that's um it looks really light to me but it's still more of a purple I want it more of like a you know like the reddish purple a few moments later so now that we got that out of the way now this is the pyro lead blah, 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 blah. pyro red light okay dump that in there that's a lot more opaque than most of the colors so something is and how thick it is right on the side of it So, and then I just mix this up. Uh, orange, yeah. Okay. So now this guy is, it was, I like doing one part uh, acrylic paint to one part of the pouring medium. And the reason why is because there's already a binder in here. So I don't want to overload the binder and to where the pigment separates or it goes dull or it dries watery. I want it to still be its vibrant, true color. So a one-to-one -one ratio for me is sufficient. And then usually I have to add water because this guy is so heavy. So considering that that was one part of pouring medium. And there was only a, a quarter part of the gel stain. So I'll probably add some more gel stain too now that I think about it. But yeah, just about like that. Uh, maybe a little more so that way if I need to modify it in any way I still have you know I didn't overload the paint up in there okay just get the rest of this out mm, that's an, I think that's enough probably yeah whoa I'm telling you it's coming it's coming and that was like mostly the gel stain good job Jen <laughs> anyway I am going to let these guys sit that's you know I'm kind of whipping them and the longer they sit the more air bubbles get popped so I can tell this is just really really thick um, I am going to add some more of the gel stain that I I wasn't thinking when I kind of went down the line with pouring medium and the gel stain. So, yeah, see how thick that is? All of the metallics are super thick from Artist Loft. So, yeah, we'll just do this. It's already got a quarter in there, so we'll do half and then like that. All right. So this was one to one to one all the way across for my acrylic paint. And then, like I said, I, I can already tell that I'm going to need to add some water to it here. That's probably about an eighth to a quarter of a teaspoon of water, not even just stir it up and then check it so I'm probably gonna have to come with a lot more water to thin it down 
I get nervous as I'm mixing. I, I'm always thinking ahead. I'm like, is this going to fall apart? Is it going to dry vibrant? Is it, you know, considering that it's a really heavy paint? Yep. That's what I like. Okay, so happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Uh, so my paints are ready to go. And I'm going to do the cell activator real quick. I have some Floetrol in this bottle. And we're going to do half of a teaspoon of Amsterdam to titanium white. We are going to tint it a little bit with the high flow. Oh, where is it? There you are. Quinacridone nickel azo gold. All right. It gives it like a little yellow tinge to it. So it makes it more like a bone wipe or like a really, really light whitish yellow color. So I'm getting ready to show you that. Now, titanium white from Amsterdam is extremely he heavy. So if we're going to do a half a teaspoon of the titanium white, we're going to do four parts of, yeah, four parts of Floetrol. So one, two. I'm kind of mounding it a little bit so I'm not scraping it. And then just like that. That's about, yeah, that's about where I want it. I'm going to slide right off. Three. Okay. Actually, let's do this. Let me shake this. Now I screwed up last time and put two drops, so I want to just do one drop. There we go. And that'll give it that color that I was looking for. I just kind of wanted the slightest off-white that I can get. Yep. Cool. So from here, I'll put in, this is, so that's two teaspoons of, so it's two and a half teaspoons total. So I always just round up and I'll put three drops of the Minwax uh, pre-stained pre, pre wood conditioner in there. You don't have to, but I like it. So it's up to you. You can decide whether you want to do it or not. If you want to do it in another color, I always, I haven't found a way to do it without the pre-stained wood conditioner. So for those of you who are international, you can get a light wood stain and you can thin it with mineral spirits. Some countries call it white spirits. Google it. I'm sure it'll tell you what the equivalency is for the specific country that you live in. So I do put one drop of the wood conditioner in most of the colors. It's kind of like the same principle as silicone, but ultimately you don't have to put it in every single color and you don't have to put a lot. It's extremely cell reactive and you know, it's not mandatory. So I'm going to let this sit just for a few minutes so the bubbles can pop. And then I'm going to mix in the wood conditioner and we'll be ready to go. So this is untinted paint base. Uh, it's the Glidden, Glidden Premium Semi-Gloss Base 3. This is untinted. And Craftneek, my paint sponsor, is their colorants are concentrated enough to tint untinted paint bases. So you get eight colors. I, I can't tell you how great their products are.
I mean, I've made a mint. I made a, like a robin's egg blue. Whoops. I have a black, a little bit left of the black. And you can use the colorants to tint whatever color you like. So you got to, you got to kind of get involved and look into, you know, what colors make what, but ultimately the end result is I love to customize everything. So we're going to go with a brown, which I took red and green, red and green makes brown. And then I darkened it with a little black and I wasn't going to make you guys sit through that because it was kind of like a squirt of this, a squirt of that. And then I had to mix it up and decide if it was the color I wanted. And then I wanted to go darker. So adding the black and then I felt like I needed more red. So, you know, it was kind of like back and forth, but ultimately it really worked out well. I mean, this is 16 ounces and it's not filled all the way. So let's go with like 10 ounces of paint. I have a bunch of leaves. These I got from the dollar store. I put two coats of primer on either side and uh, Craftnik also has primer too, which is really, uh, you could see it, co it coats really nicely. Uh, I've used Zinser and I've used Kills, and by far Craftnik is my favorite. So um, all the links are below in the description. And all I gotta do now is add the Minwax uh, pre-stained wood conditioner. So, okay, there's been some people talking about whether or not they like it. You don't have to use the wood conditioner. This is my preference, this is what I like to use in my blooms. I like adding one drop of this to, these are one and a half ounce cups. I like the colors to sell, not just the lacing. So you can use Amsterdam Titanium White without the wood conditioner. There, I don't know exactly what's in, in this paint that allows it to sell the way it does, but I know the Australian Floetrol is different from our Floetrol, so adding the Minwax Pre-Stain Wood Conditioner makes up for whatever is in the Australian Floetrol, okay? It has an odor to it. If you're worried about any of it, make sure you have proper ventilation, wear a respirator. It's, it's not as potent as the initial Minwax Gel Stain that I was using, but it, you know, it is pretty vaporous. So I just pull the lid off, put it in my paints, and then put the lid on and get it out of my way. Um, I haven't had a problem with with it so far clean up as a breeze after it dries for like a week because house paint dries a lot quicker than our typical pouring on acrylics and whatnot so I just take a paper towel with some alcohol and I'll wipe my my pour or whatever make sure the the pre-stained wood conditioner is off it's not like silicone you don't have to like really get it out of your paintings I just wipe it real quick resin or varnish and you're done all right so yeah Let's do that. I have some blogs in my Art Addicts group, some links to them, which tells you exactly how to make this from scratch or alternatives. Any kind of oil is going to sell in your paints just different ways. Some might be more clumpy, some might be more, you know, it, it all depends. So anyway, just one drop in each one. And then I'll, I'll pause you guys and stir it up. If I'm using like a transparent paint or a craft paint, I probably would eliminate the gel stain in those types of paints. Only because I don't, I don't care for how transparent paints sell. And we're done with this. So I'll just put the cap on, get it out of my way, and mix everything up. And we'll be ready to go. I'm going to pour some brown into this cup like this, okay? And then I have DecoArts 24K. Squirt, yeah, some in there like that, right? And just give it a swirl like that. Yeah, let's go like that, okay? So then when I pour my puddle, I'm hoping essentially it gives me like a, a veining of gold that'll flare out. I don't know if it's going to work, but uh, we're going to come in with some brown and make some puddles. Let me just do like one there. Okay, so we're just going to go like this. 
I'm just going to drizzle the gold all through it like that. Okay. For my puddles, like this. Maybe one there. Whoops. We'll do a big one here. And then another one here. Purple. On these guys. Whoops. What is that? Is that a... Oh my god! No, it's a bubble. Okay, I'll just pop it. Get out of there. So like that. Just floating it. I'm going to come over here first. Okay, let's see. I think about what I'm doing here. Alright, so we have our, our veins going. Now this is pretty much just the part where I gotta stretch it and cover it. So let's come downwards a little bit. Fantastic! I'm so excited with this. Oh my gosh! That is, you know, it is so rare that you can get something in your head to come out exactly how you want it. And this right here is a testament of what I wanted. I just want to move this over a little bit like that maybe. And then this guy, like that, maybe. Boom. On to the next. Blow this guy out, because I don't want it to fall over. We'll let that work. Here we go. Okay. I have to add more paint. Right in the middle. I might have to lift this up for that. Mm. 
All right, now I'll come in with this guy and finish off all my spots that haven't been covered. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Um, light blows will blow your lacing out. So. Like that. Okay. Oh, look at that over here. Oh my gosh. And... So I'm just going to put a puddle down in a corkscrew, kind of work my way up and down like that. That probably is a lot of paint, but it'll be all right. Let me, let me, uh... Actually, I'm really convinced that that's a lot of paint, so hang on a second. Now, if you run into this problem and you have too much paint on your board or substrate or whatever... You can always push it back to the center with your popsicle stick like this. And you can make your puddle and keep it, you know, how you want it. And then come in with your with your colorants. So this guy, I want red on the bottom. So we're just going to do a puddle of red. My orange. All red light. Flash of purple. Not too much. Like that. And we're just going to put a little bit, little, little more. One little drop down like that. All right, and we're going to blow. Okay, let that guy sit for a minute. You can reach up and grab your edges or whatever you need to do. If you want the, you know, my little <laughs> look at the ears that's awesome all right let's go up grab this guy and bring it over I need to get the ear over here I can also use some paint from down there and you, you know these are wooden so you want to tap along and make sure you got everything coated that is awesome you guys now for the feet, I am determined, determined to have orange feet. So basically, I'll just take my orange and just coat the feet real quick and then it'll drip off. But at least the feet will be orange. I'm a sucker for orange. <laughs> so there you have it. Now well done. with that so I'm just gonna kind of so I'm gonna leave it that is ready oh my goodness look at that you guys isn't that awesome all right so here we go this over here like that yes and then I'll bring it down I'm gonna cover his feet okay ah. Let's go with it and see what happens. You can always let it sit for a second too, because it's still going to kind of do its thing. 
So I think I'm gonna pour it this, tilt it this way and stretch it out a little bit so it goes over the wing like that. And then we'll come back. Yeah, that's how I wanna do it. Come back over this wing. You can also hold your finger right there so it'll slide better. Yep. Tapping along to just cover. Bring my center back and then I'm going to bring it down a little bit over the side. Because we're still stretching, you know. Pouring some off is not such a bad thing. And then I want this to go away up here. There we go. Cool. You guys see that? Oh, it's just so pretty. Awesome, so I hope you liked today's video, you guys. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. I hope you'll consider subscribing if you haven't already. And let me know what you think. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. Hey, guys. I hope you liked today's video. If you haven't already, click the Circle Res Inspire button to subscribe to my channel. If you ring the bell, you'll be notified instantly of any future uploads. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Bye.